This podcast is part of the Game and Entertainment Network. Visit tgenetwork.net to find the latest episodes from all our shows. It's time for AgriChat, the official podcast of the Tales of the Agronaut blog and stalwart gaming community, where we talk about stuff and things and the stuff about the things, and sometimes gaming. I'm Belgast, and let's start the show. Hey folks, it's that time again. Time for another episode of Agro Chat. This is episode 197, and tonight I'm joined by Ashgar. Hello. Kodra. Howdy. And Thalen. Bell sounds really different tonight. Yes. <clears throat> tonight we don't have Bell. Uh, I will be stay playing the part of Bell for the evening and launching us into our Game of the Month show uh, for March, which was The Sexy Brutale. Yay. We're actually recording our Game of the Month show at the end of said month. It's amazing. It really is amazing. So, Thalen, do you want to give us a little overview about why you picked this game? And So basically, I I came upon this game, I, I talked about it a little, and you did as well, back during the Game of the Year podcast, because both of us, as I think both of us picked it as a Game of the Year. I know I did. Um, and it was a game that I had completely overlooked until... I read a really good review about it, talking about how the name doesn't tell you anything about it, and that it's a really interesting, you know, kind of quasi-stealth, but mostly puzzle game about wandering around a mansion, avoiding being seen, and trying to save people from being murdered. Which is definitely what the game starts out as, and is, and that's like, you know, the the core of the game. But, you know, then then you learn all of the story of why you're wandering around in this mansion trying to save pe- people from being murdered, and it becomes a game that is 10 sads out of sads out of 10. And I'm sorry, I did not intend to make us all play another one of those, but it <laughs> happened. Yeah, that one took me by surprise. <laughs> as, as, as I was going to say, also known as getting over it with Bennett Foddy. <laughs> <laughs> because Apparently this... I have a copy of that. It was in, I guess, the Humble Monthly Bundle, so... Mm-hmm. Maybe I'll actually play it. I, I'm not sure I can recommend that. <laughs> but, I mean, it's been a foddy. He, he hates everybody who plays his games, and you can tell. But anyway. But anyway, to this game, like, this is a game about... Like, the the story of this game is ultimately about, like, learning to accept, like, the failures of this main character without, mm-hmm. like ultimately getting any of the catharsis that you typically see people try and go through like it's hard yeah. to say because like it's like closure without catharsis it, yeah it, yeah it kind of is it's you you can't get it, it's almost not even that it's like you can't get closure you can't get the catharsis but you still have to get over it yeah yeah because it's it's ultimately ultimately it comes down to A thing happened, and yes, it's all your fault. It really, really is all your fault. And it was horrible, and it was terrible, and there's nothing you can do about it. But you also need to figure out how to move on from it. (laughs) Beating yourself up forever about it isn't a good way of handling it. Yeah, because that's truly what's happening in the game, is you you are torturing yourself over and over and over and over and over. And... The game is about a piece of yourself breaking free of that and finally ending it. Or not. Or not. As the case may be. You you can, in fact, at the end of the game, choose to let it continue. Or you can find the secret ending in which you just accept, like, the dream. And so you stop the torture, but you also don't stop the dream. Which is kind of the opposite of getting over it all. Yeah, the secret ending was somehow darker. Yes, yes. Typically the secret ending is the good ending. It's really no. not this time. It looks like it might be the good ending on the surface, but it's really not when you think about it. No, it's really not. I personally I wasn't really that into the game and did not go far enough to see any of the endings. I also made a rather poor choice as to what platform to play on, as it turns out. Uh-oh. I heard you commenting on this one. Yeah, you played it on the Switch. Yeah, the real play on the PC. Yeah. Yep. yep. One of the things when making a port is that it's probably kind of important to adopt whatever your platform standard is for controls. Ah. Oh, for dear. example, 
B maybe shouldn't be the confirm button, and A definitely shouldn't be the cancel button. <laughs> oh wow! Mm. Oh, so it's like Japanese defaults? No, because Japanese defaults are in the same place that the normal A and B would be on a Nintendo controller. Right. It's really like they took the Xbox controls and decided to not move them, but keep this, not move them and just change the letters. Hmm. Oh. Yeah, I can see that being incredibly frustrating. In addition, it just doesn't run well. The first time I was seen, it took something like 10 seconds to load the weird phantoms that chase you. Wow. Oh, yeah. And the, the, the combination of all this got led to me not really getting into it. I can understand why. Yeah, yeah that sounds like a very poorly done port. Uh, it seemed yeah. kind of interesting, but also wasn't really into the stealth thing either. So... This game is the stealth thing was something I was gonna I was gonna mention with this game because it's it's ostensibly a stealth game. Really, it's only a stealth game to further the puzzle game. So yeah. you can't be in the room where something is happening. Yes. Yeah, yeah. What it really is is you. Yeah, you cannot be in a in a room with another character. If you are, you have to leave before the character's mask like rises up off their head and comes and gets you. And I, I don't actually know what happens if the mask reaches you because you you have more than enough time to get the hell out of the room. You have quite a bit of time. You slowly lose health, and if you lose enough health, you reset back to start start moving. Makes sense. But so the basic mechanics of the game are: you are experiencing a single day in this giant mansion that has like a casino and a theater in the basement and you know all sorts of rooms and you know like giant aquariums upstairs and all sorts of stuff and at the very beginning of the game you are given a watch which you can use to reset the day uh, at that point the watch is broken and so you can't go past a certain time of day basically the first area is is a tutorial um, solving the you know preventing the first murder is relatively straightforward and then at that point, the watch is repaired, and you get access to another part of the mansion. Um, but so you, so what you do is you make use of this ability to reset the day and try again to see where people are going at what times and what they're doing and what it, what items they interact with in some cases, and then figure out what you can do without directly interacting with anybody to prevent the murder. So for the first murder, it's pretty simple a guy gets shot with a gun you are able to find a blank and replace the bullet in the gun with the blank thus preventing the guy from getting killed and giving him enough time to throw a candlestick at the dude with the gun turns out even this tutorial is fairly temporally sensitive you can't find the blank until the guy roots through the safe containing a whole bunch of junk and happens to throw the blank on the floor yes yes the blank is locked in the safe so you have so you can't get it until one until the character that you're trying to save unlocks said safe. And then each time you save a character, you get a power based on that character. So after you've saved the first character, the watch gets fixed, and then you're able to attune yourself to clocks around the mansion. And what that means is whatever clock you're attuned to, that's where you'll start whenever you reset the day. Uh, saving later ones give you like the ability to pick locks, uh, the ability to talk to ghosts, and things like that. And and every character, as you rescue them, like, sudden subtly remind like hints to you that they know you. Yeah, I mean I don't know how subtle it is. They all basically they recognize you and call you by name. <laughs> your name is Lefkadi Boon. Spoilers: Your name isn't really Lefkadi Boon. Yeah. Um, it's questionable whether Lefkadi Boon is someone who actually existed, and, you know, maybe that's just the role that you decided to put yourself into. It's more likely, considering that the initials match with your actual initials, that this is a kid, someone you just completely made up. The puzzles, uh, I feel like the puzzles that you are solving do a good job at escalating themselves, and, like, that's that's actually my probably my favorite thing about this game is that I don't think I really ever got stuck solving the puzzles. Yeah, there were there were a couple where I had to try a couple of different things to figure out exactly um, what I needed to do where in what order. But I always had 
I always had a good idea of what I needed to try next. I had one puzzle uh, where I was being far too clever by half. Uh, the puzzle in the for the opera singer. Yep, same here. I'm pretty sure you probably tried the same thing I did. There is a record in like the very starter area, and I just grabbed that record and like booked it all the way. Uh, up until that area and tried to like use that record to guide the guy in. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's not the answer to the puzzle. I never did figure out what that record was for though. Um, I think it's just so you can hear some different music. Uh, I don't recall it, it, it explicitly being needed anywhere. Um, well, no, actually you, the other thing is towards the very end to overhear a password, you need to take that record off so that you can hear what people are saying in the bar. Oh, right, 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 right. Yeah. But yeah, I was trying to take the record from the room that it was in and run it over to the lockable wardrobe closet and put it in there, thinking that maybe that would cause the uh, servant to hear it from there, go into that closet, and then I could lock him in that way. Because it was obvious I had to get him to go in the closet and lock him in there. Isn't, Isn't that the solution? I was doing it at the wrong time was the problem. Oh, you were waiting till after he had uh, done his practicing? Yeah, I wasn't while... doing it early enough. I thought that I had to, like, go get the other record from the bar and do some sort of switch. I was making it too complicated. Yep. What you actually have to do is just grab the record and move it over to the wardrobe before he start, before the first time he ever hears anything. Yeah, that if was anything... the only one that gave me any sort of grief. Yeah, if anything, I was... A little disappointed that the puzzles didn't escalate to the point that I thought that maybe they might finally. I I really expected the game, the final puzzle, to be save everyone in a single day, and that is not that is not in fact something that happens. That is also not the message of the game. No, it's not. <laughs> no, it sure isn't. But so as the game goes on, you're like you're saving these you're saving these people from various things, and there's like supernatural stuff going on because I mentioned there's ghosts. Um, the woman who can talk to ghosts, who you get that power from, she got, like, gets brainwashed by this giant voodoo fish in an aquarium, uh, and you, to, to save her, you have to prevent that from happening. So, there's I, this implication that there's, like, something evil and mystical happening within the mansion, and that's what's the cause of it all. To, to be fish. To be very <laughs> clear, I'm pretty sure the exact species of that voodoo fish is red herring. <laughs> pretty sure. I... I bet it is, because it is in fact a <laughs> giant red herring. Um, like one the the blind sculptress gets killed by a giant poisonous spider, um, that apparently is kept to be milked for use in uh, cocktails. Um, the the giant poisonous spider doesn't actually exist. Um, you know, various stuff like that. There's like just all these all these mystical things happening mirrors that the servants can use to transport from one area of the mansion to another the servants are the servants are really interesting to me uh there's a there's a tell about the servants that i chalked up to this is an indie game not this was an intentional design decision which is the servants all have the same animation set as you do <laughs> no other character does but the servants do. I did not actually notice that. And as it turns out, there's a good reason for that. <laughs> yep. It uh but on the whole like mysticism thing, like it made me think of Gone Home a bit. Mm -hmm. Because it's like Gone Home did the same thing where it's like maybe everything weird that's going on is the result of this creepy super oh nope, nope, sure isn't. Yep. Yeah, yeah, it's that same sort of thing where they try to like they sew these clues that something mystical happened and but nope. Um, you start you start seeing this dude in a gold skull mask every so often. Like you only ever like sometimes when you're looking through a keyhole to look into another room, you'll see him like as he's leaving that room. Like I don't think it's even possible to end up in the same room with him. He's always leaving a room as you look into it, and so it's clear that he's you know the one ultimately responsible for this, which is true because he's another aspect of you. It does an incredibly good job of pacing. I think pacing both the puzzles. So it's like okay, it is a it, it's sort of a game where you you iterate on solutions until you get one right. But in in breaking one particular issue, you're able to 
understand another one. It's like, okay, this the puzzle adapts to your attempting to solve it until it no longer can, which is the point at which you win. Right. Versus you bash your head against the puzzle until you finally come across a solution. Yeah. Which I think is a really neat way of approaching puzzles. Yeah, they did a really good job of like a partial solution will change things, but just just not enough yet. Yeah. And a lot of times it'll give you it gives you hints as to what the next thing you need to do is. Sometimes that's the thing you should have done first, but you have a better sense of that through through the partial solutions. There isn't I, I didn't feel like when I was playing there was a lot of me barking up the wrong t- wrong tree for the most part. Yeah. Like sometimes it happened, but like is like in the example that Kodra gave about the record player, but generally I didn't feel like that was the case. And then at the same time, they also did a really good job of giving you access to new parts of the mansion, because you know basically each each puzzle took play takes place mostly in a new part of the mansion until towards the very end. You're it's well even the very last the very last one. It's you're going through some previous parts of the mansion to get to a new part that you haven't been in. But so you're seeing all these new rooms, and then also each time you solve a puzzle, you're getting a new power and it basically works in that Metroidvania style that you get the power and you immediately know like four or five places that you've already been where maybe you could use this power to get to somewhere new or see something new. Yeah, I really like that that Metroidvania feel, which is interesting because I don't normally really like Metroidvanias a whole lot, but in this case it worked for me. Yeah. But you like Zelda games. I do like Zelda games. Yeah, that actually a Zelda game is probably a closer... Yeah. Yeah, that that's probably what it is, is that I, I do like Zelda games, and this was kind of a different take on it, but a very similar feel. And then the, th- the, the thing, more than anything else, that really sold this game for me was being able to like look through keyholes and see what people are doing and listen on their, on their conversations and start piecing together like who they are and what they're doing and what's going on. And they did a really, really good job of making the characters like interesting and making me want to know more about them. At the end, of course, it turns out that you haven't actually met any of these characters because they were all just fantasies of your imagination, and it's entirely possible that they're not that the real versions of them would have acted in different ways because this is just how you viewed them. <laughs> but so basically. Basically, what it turns out, the horrible thing that happened was you had this giant mansion and beautiful wife, pregnant wife, about to have a baby. Giant mansions are really, really expensive and require a lot of upkeep. And you had run out of money. (laughs) So you were going to burn it down for the insurance money. And this brilliant plan involved, like, inviting all your friends for one last huge party because... Like, that's what you did with this mansion, was you threw huge parties for your friends, and it was awesome, and, you know, had all so much fun. So possibly, why, for... possibly why you were out of money. Probably, yes. That and the gambling. It's it's implied that you were were, were a, 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 uh, a gambling addict. Um, invite them for one last huge party, and then blow the whole house up, burn it down and, for the insurance money. And... It was all brilliantly planned, and the incendiary devices were on timers, so you know you would make sure that everybody was out of the house before you know they, they went off and everything, except you fucked up the timers. And so you were the only one that got out alive, and you have been basically lying in a coma in a hospital somewhere ever since then, torturing yourself in your own mind. And so all the servants are you, and the dude in the gold skull? is you and basically the you know the, the the gold skull guy is like you know we you know we we don't deserve to be forgiven given we deserve to be tortured forever and ever and ever yeah he's literally the guy who wants you to beat yourself up forever yeah and the bloody woman that came to you at the very beginning and gave you the broken watch and you know tried to basically woke you up and put you on the path to try and stop all this is you know, is is your wife or your imagination of her. And so basically the end of the game is you being presented with the choice of let it keep going 
start the day over and things continue or end it and wake up and the the correct the, the correct choice is ended of course at which point the credits roll and an incredibly sad song plays speaking of songs the soundtrack on this game is fantastic it's oh it's amazing. super good mm-hmm. it's so good uh and i kind of got into it because i like electro swing a whole lot and was like huh interesting i play a game where i get to listen to electro swing the whole time except that electro swing has a particular vibe to it that is perfect for this game and and i think that's really neat yeah like everything stylistically for this game was amazing like the the art style was beautiful and the music was fantastic um and then and the two vocal tracks were just wonderful two vocal tracks i'm only remembering uh one there's the... There, there's the song that the the opera singer sings that ends with her death and then there's the one that plays over the credits all oh, right yep and then there is also a secret ending which basically that... throughout throughout the game there are cards that you can pick up they're just you know ace of diamonds three of clubs so forth they're you know a lot of them are just lying on the floor some of them are hidden in places if you find all 52 cards you can take them to it's like the room of bad of old habits where there is a demon chained and he tells you that you know you can just draw a card and just let go and you know go back to the good times and then you go into the ballroom and all of your friends are there with their masks off dancing and having a good time and it's wonderful and and even and even you are there like you that you're controlling is there in your mask but then you're there as well unmasked dancing with your wife and everybody's happy and wonderful and it's great and it will go on forever or you can walk up to the stained glass window and use the ability that breaks stained glass at which point the dream ends and the credits roll it can't go on forever what a weird ending yeah it's a weird as secret endings go it's weird yeah it's yeah it's it's not the secret good ending it's it's a secret ending <laughs> i'm not sure i'm i'm not sure how i feel about the like animation of this game i don't know maybe this is just the indie coming through but like it's very off-putting like it's very stylized it's very off-putting but i i don't know that it really worked for me hmm. the like and it, by animation do you mean like the visual style or the... i think that i think well everything everything moves a little awkward ah yeah 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 that's true it seems like everyone is moving too much it's a thing i notice in video games if you ever watch a character <laughs> breathe like any character that has a breathing animation in a video game breathe is, is like hyperventilating i can <laughs> definitely i can definitely see that in this one too but it but it gives you that air it gives you that sense that everyone is like jumpy even characters who aren't supposed yeah. to be is that, yeah there's like a, a i don't want to say puppet like quality but maybe yeah that no that's that seems pretty accurate to me because i like one of the things that it reminded me of in a way and just like the the general the general visual style was like grim fandango like the you know dio de los muertos style and it's and there's no direct connection there but like i felt there was a similar vibe i don't know it feels like it it feels like there's more of a connection than there actually is yeah i think there's a somewhat similar art style going on there i can definitely like, see that the blocky models Mm-mm. yeah and the slightly oversized heads i had a consistent i had consistent flashbacks to thief while i was playing it there's something about that sound you make when you walk around oh yeah they're like i'm going for a stroll with tap shoes yeah it, except here it makes sense you would be wearing hard stole shoes <laughs> that's true you know, you're not you're not really dressed for stealth you're dressed for a masquerade ball so <laughs> yeah so it's been a while since i've heard that particular sound it felt the other thing that i got the other vibe i got from it was clue which is probably yeah. not super surprising but i think it made me expect that the game was going to be funnier than it actually was yeah yeah and i mean there were some moments of humor but they tended to be dark humor it was pretty they were pretty dark humor but it was like 
feels like clue bright colors upbeat cheerful music and like i realized that i played persona 5 last year and i probably should have been a little apprehensive of that particular combination but i wasn't i feel like i wanted a little bit more background on the characters like i kind of wanted to know their stories a bit more yeah and you get a little from their invitations if you collect them but some of them you can't even collect until like after the the ending of the game if you go back in and continue yeah um because there is a lot of there's a lot of backstory there, there's there's a lot of stuff you pick up from like listening in on people and stuff like that but then there's also stuff you learn from each character has an invitation to the party a lot of them like it's on their body when they die and you can pick it up then um and then there's also descriptions like information about most of the rooms a lot of it you get just by entering the room but then towards the very end after you've saved the architect of the mansion his power is like when you enter a room you can hit the action key if his you know symbol pops up to remember about that room and you'll have more information about it in your your little journal i did like that there was there were a there was all sorts of like background stuff that you could interact with and see, you know, get descriptions of or information from that had no direct bearing on the game whatsoever. Yeah. I felt like, like a lot of that, it was like information. It wasn't exactly information overload, but it was a lot of, it was a lot of largely unrelated background information that served a really great purpose. in, I, I think, uh, keeping you keeping you in the dark as to what's going on until much later than you otherwise might yeah it reminded me a lot of you know in the old sierra games how you could interact with everything and get you know look at everything and get a description of it even if it didn't have anything to do with you know the puzzles or if, if you you could have ignored it as far as the gameplay was concerned but yeah you know but they wrote a little description for it but yeah I, I definitely liked that and i and i feel like you know a number of those things are things that will like will give you give you a little bit more feeling for one of the characters or just for, for the mansion as a whole you know like all the the sculptures scattered around the mansion were all created by the blind sculptress and so you can kind of get a feel for her personality a little bit by you know from looking at them yeah although i was never I wasn't entirely sure if all of the all of the people, all of your friends, were actually in real life the kind of people they seem to be, or if there were like idealized ish versions of themselves or what that was mm -hmm. like it wasn't sure exactly how much hyperbole was going on there. Yeah. With them or with the mansion. Yeah. I mean certainly there's Certainly, the mansion is super hyperbolic. Yeah, like it's it's made pretty clear towards the end that like there's things here that that did not exist in the real mansion. There was not actually a giant elevator made out of a repurposed furnace system that went down to an under basement. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, my my assumption is that the you know that the various characters are yeah are hyperbolized a little bit that you know the. The locksmith, you know, maybe wasn't quite so could, you know, crack absolutely any lock. Maybe, you know, the 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 strong man maybe wasn't quite the like incredible um he man that it made him out to be. You know, ability to just rip open a cage through main strength. But I got the impression that like the the basic personalities were assumed to be accurate to the real characters. They were just kind of like larger than life in your imagination. Yeah. So did you did you uh play through it again after like after the ending? Like did you reset and I, w I went I... back in and ran around a bit and continued collecting some cards. Gotcha. Cuz yeah, I'm curious I I'd be sort of curious like how much is there afterward other than what you'd expect. Yeah, it's mostly the, you know, the day continues to play through and reset itself and you can basically make use of that to try and you know find the remaining uh invitations and whatever cards you hadn't found yet i was a little disappointed that like the very last power that you get is the ability to transport yourself through the mansion's mirrors but then immediately after getting that it's 
the end of the game. So you only actually can use that power in the post game. Yeah, it kind of has last power syndrome. Yeah. Very similar to last character in your party syndrome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I, I feel like we've kind of... It, it's interesting. You want to know more about the characters. I feel like while this game is a very sad game and like it's an interesting emotional gut punch and maybe this is the point, I almost wish that it like wasn't and we could actually like continue learning about these characters. Mhm. Yeah, and I like I I think the designer's point was that it's you're really basically really the game is all about kind of like learning about and coming to terms with yourself. But that but, doesn't feel like what you're doing in the but yeah, game. Yeah. Like, like by the time you realize that that's what's really going on. The the yeah. story of the game is telling you that you're trying to get over your own self but the actions of the game are like you learning about these people yeah yeah there's a bit of dissonance there i haven't quite figured out how i feel about sort of the whole ending series of reveals yeah it's one of those things where i thought it was really really beautiful like as i was doing it and as i ruminate on it i like it less and less it certainly would be the first time i've had that kind of experience yeah, I, I have a little of that too. Like, I, I definitely still like the game itself as far as, like, the gameplay and everything apart from that. But, and, and but I yeah. Think, I, hmm? I, well, and I think it's really cleverly done. Yeah, it is. I just don't know that I like it. <laughs> yeah, I, like, I kind of feel a little bit like, you know, the designer really wanted to make a game that was 10 sads out of, set, out of 10 and, like did it with an emotional gut punch of an ending, but I don't know I don't know that the rest of the game and the ending quite match up. Like they quite fit together. It kind of I, I think I've made the comment before that's like, hey, we figured out how to be really sad in our games. Like now I want to see some <laughs> other emotions. To be fair, I feel like we've recently gotten a whole bunch of different emotions in video games that are like not sadness. It's and true. I was a appreciative of that and like i was missing a sad game but i feel like this is not a well executed sad game despite being a really really well executed game yes yes like and i and i feel like that's the that's i guess the 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 dissonant part for me is like mm -hmm. the game is so good and even even this like super sad ending reveal is done super super well mm -hmm. i just don't think that the game needed to be a sad game yeah i mean it could have been and it was a dark game but i don't think it needed to be like just crushingly sad necessarily i don't even think it needed a happy ending necessarily no i just I don't think it needed this type of a sad ending where nothing that you did actually mattered yeah. Yeah, I think that's really it, is that at the end, nothing you did mattered. Other than, I... like, in enabling yourself to get over everything. Yeah. But, like, the, the, the act of saving people didn't matter. Yeah, and I guess that's the thing that I, that's the thing that I go back and forth on as far as how I feel about the, the resolution is it, on the one hand, if, you know, with the game's theme being about you did a thing and you need to come to terms with you need to move on with your life and and that thing mattered but it's over and you can't go back and change it and change it and you can't like atone or anything for it you just have to keep on going and like there's it's like there's almost a poetry to it but not quite because it's not quite like the overall sort of tone isn't the things you do don't matter. It's not really that nihilist. And if it were, then I feel like the you do a bunch of things and they ultimately don't matter would f would would fit really well with that. Mm -hmm. But it's, but it's not quite that. It might have worked better if to save all of these people you had to do really awful things to other people or something. I don't know. I think it could have had other. I think it had, could have had multiple other very good endings. That might have been a little bit more fitting. That having been said, it doesn't have the kind of ending that I just sit and roll my eyes for like an hour afterward. 
Oh Which yeah, I've, no. I've definitely played those that game, those games. Right. Yeah, taken taken just you know by itself, divorced from the rest of the game. The ending was you know perfectly good ending. Of course, now that now that I say that, I have I can't think of a game that I've played that has like the eye rolliest kind of ending off the top of my head. I was going to draw a comparison, and then I couldn't think of one as I idly screw as I idly scroll through my Steam library. Thinking of games I played, looking at games I played, but yeah, it, it it's a really good game with a really good ending. But I don't know that I liked the ending, which is an, an interesting feeling to have. Did, has this studio done anything else? I I don't think so. The publisher has done a few other things recently, but I don't think this development studio has done anything that I know of. Because I'd be really interested in seeing what else this uh what else this studio does. I mean. Their website is woefully out of date. <laughs> it might have a copyright of 2016 on the bottom of it at the moment. <laughs> well, it does, it does have a copyright of 2016. And, like, the Sexy Brutale team coming soon is listed on their About page. Hmm. Oh, I did not realize that they're a Spanish studio. Yeah. That's cool. A Spanish publisher. Yeah, that was uh, that was explicitly mentioned in the the article that I that got me interested in the game, talking about like the art style and basically the them and the art style and how that them being a Spanish studio informed the art style. So I see the 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 thing I see lists them as a UK studio. The development studio is UK. The publisher is, I mean, Madrid. Yeah, they they're called Tequila Works. Okay, yeah, because it because it was a collaborative. They basically the Tequila Works was the publisher and that was I guess also actually involved in the development. Their website is woefully out of date. <laughs> woefully out of date. <laughs> like holy crap, it's out of date. They put all of their effort into the game website and not it into their corporate website. Apparently. Well I'm fascinated because this article is listing off so so the obvious inspiration that I would tie this to is Majora's Mask. Uh but uh, apparently there are other games almost just like it uh, that I should probably check out because I love Majora's Mask and I love this game. But like apparently Gregory Horror Show, Tulip, and Moon RPG Remix. I've never heard of any of those. I've only heard of one of those. And I didn't think it was available in English. Wow, uh, the cover for Gregory Horror Show is really weird. Apparently all of the... like. Apparently all of these games are Japanese, and this is a game genre that really appeals to Japanese audiences. Oh yeah, look at that. Spying through keyholes to eavesdrop useful information. Huh. Huh. Yeah, I mean, it. I do really like... I, I liked it in this game, and I like it in other stealth, stealth games. I don't know that I'd call this a stealth game, but it's got a lot of the trappings of a stealth game. Um, but I, I like the getting the glimpses into other people's lives that you get from just kind of like listening to guards conversations and finding little tidbits it's kind of like that um it's probably a literary term for it that i don't know but that that those little snippets um the little vignettes that you get that are super good at fleshing out a character or or a scene or an event without a whole lot of preamble. Yeah. I think what's fascinating about this specific game is that it is just, it, by nature, it has to be a really well done, fully realized day. Like, the goings on in the mansion all have to, like, fall, like, they all have to make sense because your character can actually just be anywhere at any point so you can't just have yeah. like guys spawn out of nowhere yeah because uh, yeah exactly and yeah it's, it's really neat to see this intricate web getting woven uh i uh it makes me think of editing voice lines for time i i bet that i bet that there are some like dialogue pieces that are carefully timed just to make sure it all clicks at this at the right in the right ways or just to, yeah, just to make sure that you have enough time to see the dialogue box on the screen 
mm-hmm. while the people are while you're spying through a keyhole. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, I mean, there were definitely times that I I was pretty sure that I knew what the solution was, but I reset the day a, a few more times because I wanted to make you see all of the conversations and everything. My favorite conversation was between the two, uh, ba- like the 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 two uh servants that were finishing each other's sentences oh yeah in the in the theater in the theater and then if you follow you follow them and you continue following them and they finally they enter a room with another servant who is incredibly annoyed by them doing that (laughs) tells him to cut it out but yeah i like the the ability to pay so much attention to the detail of this thing because Ultimately, you are retreading and iterating over this entire day so many different times that you're probably going to get an opportunity to see all of it. Yeah, it's neat to see. It's like, oh, there's there's stuff going on in every corner, every tiny corner of this, and you can follow them all. Any final thoughts on the game as we uh, seem to be winding down a little bit? I'm curious. To, I would love to see more games in this format. Like I've like in the the version of like resetting the clock every day, iterating through puzzles. I've played now two of them, and I've enjoyed both. It sort of. Isn't that quite that thing you describe? But have you tried Radiant Historia? I have not. You should try Radiant Historia. Okay. And that, as Ash says, it is not quite the thing you describe, but it might be close enough. I kind of want to see if I can track down any of these games that they say they were inspired by. They are all old in Japanese. Yes. Some of some of them were released in English. At least two were released in English. One in one only in Europe. The one I have heard, and it has had on and off attempts at fan translation for the last at least seven years. Tulip was apparently actually released in North America, and Gregory Horror Show was released in uh, PAL. So there are, in fact, translations. Apparently in Chulip, you are a monkey postman trying to help visitors, uh, villagers fall in love. <laughs> oh, okay. Which sounds interesting. I wonder if it's as dark. It doesn't look very dark, but <laughs> looks can be deceiving. Also, probably don't get it for the Switch. Really don't. Apparently not. Yeah. It is also out, uh, also on basically everything else, so maybe pick something else. Yeah. Like it did, it, it runs great on the PC. So it ran, anything yeah. else, that, that's good fallback. It ran, it ran just fine on the PC. It is a pity that it didn't run well on the Switch because I think it would be a really great Switch game. Yeah, like I, it, I thought it would be. Mm-hmm. It definitely seems like it ought to be. I'm now sort of curious if uh, this is a if this kind of Switch set of Switch ports is if like Switch ports are just having. It's just hard to do well or something, or if this is just a weird one. I haven't really played very many other Switch ports, I don't think. Not sure, but this seems to be doing okay. This is fair. A few other indie games I've tried are also doing okay. Speaking of a few of the other indie games on the Switch... (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, what's what's our next game of the month? Our next game of the month... So... I wasn't intending on going runner runner sad game, but uh I definitely wanted to play a sad I definitely wanted to play this game for a while, and it is definitely a sad game. So we're gonna be playing Night in the Woods. Night in the Woods. Okay. Go it's back a- home and experience your childhood home as a adult who does not want to be there. It certainly sounds like a depressing game. <laughs> I'm not sure I would describe it as a sad game. Yeah, I don't think I would either. But we'll talk about that in a month. Yep, yeah. We'll have to look up words for emotions. <laughs> yeah, that's going to be required for dealing with this game. Yeah. That bit I commented, the bit I've commented before, earlier, and multiple times before about games with different emotions, yeah, this one's got, this one will have ones that I don't even have words for. Maybe there's a very nice German one for it. We'll see. Probably. But yeah, Night in the Woods, also Night. available on Switch. I hear that port is not awful, so... It's quite good. Well, good. I, I can confirm is good. That's how I'm playing it. Yeah, it's pretty good. And that will be our April game of the month. Hope everybody has a good one. We will see you next week 
with a more standard sort of show. And I hope you all have a good night or morning or day. Good night. Good night. Good night. See you.